Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to our service tonight and thank y'all for coming out this bright, sunny, warm afternoon. It's very tempting to be outside, but it's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Let's start with a word of prayer before we get started. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for who only took the time to come and worship with you, Lord. I pray that you would use me as a voice box to present your word and your message. That our hearts would be filled and that you would bless this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Tonight, the title of the message is called The Four R's of Relationships. And we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 1, we're starting verse 8 through 17. If you will, if you'll please stand to honor God's word as we read. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means now at length I may have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith of both you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let here to that I might have some fruit among you also even as among the Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to the faith that it is written. The just shall live by faith. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Now when you first look at this passage of scripture, you think relationships. This kind of doesn't sound like relationships. But what I'd like to do as we go through this tonight is just point out what kind of relationship to have with Christ and other people. It's not a relationship of husband and wife. When you think of relationships, normally that's what comes to mind. A spouse, a loved one, um, how well they're doing. That's most of what people think of when they think of relationships. They may think of dating. You know, growing up, I know a lot of young men, even myself, used to go to a church for a certain woman, or young lady, if you will. She was a pretty girl, and I was interested in meeting her and getting to know her, to start that relationship. Or it may be, relationship made you think of marriage, finding that perfect mate, that the prettiest girl on your arm so you can show her off. Uh, maybe ladies think of the Harlequin romance hunk that they always put on the cover of the books. The secular community thinks many things in this way. As a believer in Christ, we have a different way to view relationships. And we'll start tonight with the four R's. The first is to recognize. Recognize what? You think about this, we all have egos, don't we? Sometimes they get bent out of shape. And it's human nature, they like to be recognized. You know, you like to be thanked if you did something. Good job, you want to say, hey, great job, I like what you did here. You know, it stokes our egos, it makes us feel good. But when we look at verse 8, the first thing we see with Paul, when we agree in greeting the church of Rome, he thanks God for all of them. He builds them up. He states, because your faith is being reported all over the world. 
he recognized something very special in the Roman church. He recognized the faith that they had. It was known everywhere because remember the times they were living in in the first century in Rome. It was the biggest city in the world at that time. It was full of sin and debauchery. You would almost compare it with Las Vegas today or called Sin City. This was not easy to be a person of faith in the church and to be a member of the Roman church, much less to be a Christian then, because that's where they were doing the crucifixions and they were persecuted. But he took notice of their faith. They persevered through all those the remarks, the slurs, the slams, everything that it took, they persevered through faith. They were living as holy as God intended. And Paul complimented their faith. In Colossians 4, 6, it says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how ye ought to answer every man. If you think about this, the way he greeted them, what would it be like if we meet when we meet somebody new here at the church? Hey, brother, my name is Derek. I like I like your tie. You're looking sharp today. Hey, that's a nice dress. I'm glad you're here today. You know, you treat them with a smile on your on your face when you greet them. You compliment them. You show them that you care. That you notice something about them. And that's the first part of building that relationship with that person. Because we want that relationship to grow so we can share the gospel with them. Today, unfortunately, if we give a compliment, usually the response is, what do you want now? You know, all right, you're up to something. What do you want? Why are you being so nice? I believe that's the devil's response for us doing God's plan of building up others and lifting up their spirits so that we don't tear them down, we lift them up. In John 13, 35, we read, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. Now that brings us to the number two part. We want to reinforce that love for each other with prayer. In verse 9 of our text, we see Paul writing, he is constantly remembering them in prayer, praying for them day in and day out. He's reinforcing his love for them. You might even say he puts feet on his prayers. Let's think about this. If God lays it on your heart for someone to be encouraged, maybe that someone is you that should go encourage a brother or sister. Don't wait on someone else to do it. If it's on your heart to pray about it, be willing to go out and do it. Be a part of the solution. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> when you pray to God with supplication and earnestly, be willing to do your part. Be that light. Your answer to that prayer may be God giving you the tools to step out and minister or encourage or be a listener when somebody needs it the most. They're going through trials and they just need to talk and get things off their chest. Sometimes just being quiet and just being there. That can be a ministry to that person. If you ask God to do His part, don't be a hypocrite and not do your part. Mean what you say when you pray to the Father. And let's put feet on our prayers for the good of others. In 2 Timothy 3.17 says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 
when I think about that, I think about him giving us the tools. You know, if he wants to bring out the best in other people, God's going to bring out the best in us. To do that, to bring out that best in other people, we want to recognize something in them. Give them a compliment. Build that relationship. And then we reinforce our efforts with prayer. We pray for them. We have a new visitor come to church. We compliment them. We recognize them. We make them feel loved and recognized as a part of our church family. The next thing we do, we bring them in. We pray for them. We minister to their needs. We reinforce our efforts with prayer. The third thing that comes to mind, the third R, is to remember your obligations. Paul was obligated to the Jews and Gentiles. He states he was a debtor. When you think about that, how was he a debtor? As Christians, we have an obligation to share the good news of Christ. He was a debtor because he felt so strongly about his obligation to share the gospel. It did not matter if they were Greek, they were Roman, if they were Jews. He felt it was his obligation, his responsibility to share the gospel with them, to share the good news with them. We talked about last week, gospel meaning good news. To be able to share that. That's an awesome obligation to have. As Christians, our obligation to share the good news of Christ and to share the gospel is a very important part of our walk. In John 20, 21, we see it. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you as my Father has sent me. Even so, I send you. That's a forerunner to him talking about the Great Commission. He is sending us out to do what? To share the gospel. To be his feet on prayers. To be boots on the ground, if you will. To be in the trenches. When we became a Christian, we signed up as a soldier for Christ. It's a war between good and evil every day. This is our obligation. We're obligated to do this. We're obligated to do what is right, morally, and to follow God's Word, and most of all, share His Word with others. When you think of other obligations and morally thing, um, to bring out that, you think, you drive by, you see a house on fire. Do you just keep going? No, our moral obligation is to pick up the phone, cell phone, call 911, stop, see if there's anybody that's in danger. Help them. That's our obligation. We see a wreck on the highway. It's our obligation if we're there first to render aid as a good Samaritan rendered aid. It didn't matter who it was. It's our responsibility to love one another. Now that brings us to the best, to bring out the best in others. We've already talked about recognizing something to compliment. We've talked about reinforcing our efforts with prayer and putting feet on them. And remembering our obligation, whatever it may be, to do what's right in the sight of God. And finally, the fourth R for our relationships is we rely on the power of God. <laughs> If you look at verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. It is powerful. It is a life unto its own. It is a changing force that gives us eternal life. Listen, everyone knowing Christ brings out the best in you, in me. And everyone else that knows Christ. 
Paul says in verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith that is as written. The just shall live by faith. What does that mean for us? Think of righteousness as the right relationship with God. We receive righteousness through faith. That faith comes from believing in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. These four things that I've mentioned are very important, I think, in growing a church. As we continue on, some other scriptures I found that relate to the passage tonight. Ephesians 2 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Acts 4 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we bring out the best in others, we recognize something to complement. We start that relationship with a new person or a new, new soul, a new body, a new friend that comes to Emmanuel. We start loving on them. We reinforce our efforts with prayer. We pray with them. We minister to them. We find out what their needs are. We show love to them any way possible. We are a loving church, amen? Amen. We remember our obligations to tell them about Christ. God will show us the right time to share the word with them, the gospel with them. He will let us know when the harvest is ripe. <clears throat> We start by building that relationship with them and loving them. Engaging them with other believers. And as they start seeing and it gets more and more and more, we all have that opportunity to really sit down and share the gospel with them. Understanding that Jesus is the one and only he died for their sins. He died for our sins. He died for my sins. He died on the cross that everybody might be saved. He's already paid the price. Salvation is free. <coughs> That's when we start relying on the power of God to take hold. We share the gospel with Him and God saves them. Amen? Amen. So when you think about this in Romans, it's a really a, it's a simple plan. It's a four-step process. That when I read these scriptures, you pull out of that scripture, it's a four-step process <clears throat> to grow a new believer, to celebrate a new person coming to church, to grow the church. It's how we should greet everyone. You know, how we should celebrate one another. I challenge each of us to practice that this week. As we meet somebody, find something to greet them with. Something to compliment them on. And see how the conversations go. That one little compliment can go way farther than just a look or snug remark or anything like that. Let's do what it takes to grow our church, to grow our fellowship, to bring people to Christ. Because the Great Commission tells us to go out and make disciples. He commands us to go out and share His Word. And I believe we should do it every chance we get. And I believe Paul, when he wrote this here, he was giving the Church of Rome that perfect formula that I think is still valid today for us to follow when it comes to growing a church and to share with new believers and bring them to Christ. In closing, I want to say thank you each and every one for coming out and taking your time. Think about bringing out the best in others. Think about how we engage our spouses, how we engage the mailman, 
how we engage the waitress. Whoever it is we may meet, maybe it's the electrician, the plumber, whatever it may be, whoever it may be. Think about the way we engage them and see what will happen. And we're going to put it in God's hands. He's going to pave the way. He's going to put the person there for us to witness to. He's going to open the door and open the way. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the reading of your word and the study of your St. Paul. Lord, there's so much we can learn from him as we read and follow him in the book of Romans, Lord. Every book in your, Bible, in your word is good for everything, for correction, for growth. Lord, we love you so much. I pray that you would be with each and every one of us here, that the message will touch the lives of those that heard it, Lord. And let us go out and do as you command us to do. Bless us and bring us back at the appointed hour. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.